Hey, welcome to My Mission and Purpose. I am Garth Haslam. Today's guest is uh, somebody named Carly. I find her inspiring because she really is an everyday hero. You look around us and there's people who, you know, we all have difficulties and problems and they all have their own flavors. She has her own but she's not used those for an excuse. She has achieved and become, at a very young age, she's done things that I could live to be 200 years old and I'll never do. Just like the rest of us, she has her own problems. Listen for those. And listen for what she's able to, been able to achieve in her very young life. She is inspiring. You know, the point of what I'm trying to do is not to tell you how she's awesome and the rest of us are not. It's that we all have our own difficulties, our own blend of uh, demons, and our own blend of gifts and possibilities, and that we can all become an everyday hero like Carly. Let's meet Carly. Okay, welcome. Carly Palmer, how are you? I'm so good, thank you. You are a hero to many already. And <laughs> you're probably a third of my age, but hey, you know, uh, when, when you see a hero, that's a hero, right? <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about what you're doing. Okay, um, I'm just finishing up graduate school. So I study marriage, family, and human development. I graduate in April, so I'm pretty excited. With the bachelor's or the master's, master's. degree? Master's, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, I want to have these guys get to know who you are. Okay. What is entertainment for you? Entertainment. Oh, that's a good question. Probably this is, this is a more embarrassing answer than I would like to admit, but it's December, and... I know that they are awful, but Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is painful. There is just something about them <laughs> that makes me feel all just warm and cozy and like I'm right at home. So I walked downstairs. The wife had one of those things on the other day, and I was yeah. like, oh, Hallmark. They're awful. They're <laughs> so awful. And I'm, I'm embarrassed every time I watch them with someone else because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but I still watch them. I don't know what it is. Well, so. you, you have a pretty good idea that it's going to end well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's all the good Christmas feels, and it just makes you feel homey. I don't know. I like it. So right now, that's some entertainment. Okay. Um, let's, keep, let's stay on this question. What okay. else is entertainment for you? Um, sports. People watching. I love people watching. I think it's fascinating. Where, where's your favorite place to people watch? Oh, Walmart, probably. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for the people of Walmart. Yeah, they're really fascinating people at Walmart. Okay, sports. Yeah. Yeah, I play a lot of sports and watch a lot of sports. I just like sports. It's Three favorite a release sports. for me. Volleyball, easily, number one. Sand volleyball number two. Can, can I do that? Just kidding. Volleyball to play, mm -hmm. to watch football, and then basketball. Okay. Yeah. You're not playing football? I'm not, no. Not currently. Maybe someday. You never know. <laughs> Wide receiver. Uh, Tall. I did play powder puff in high school, so I feel like that counts. Yeah? For something. Well, you have done it. <laughs> if you had a full day and money was no object... And you could be there in a in a second. Yeah. Yeah. What would it be and where? Oh easy. There is there is this place in Romania. I lived in Romania for a summer. And I worked in an orphanage, but it's it's not an orphanage like you would maybe imagine in a third world country. It's it was pretty nice, a really happy place. The kids are well taken care of and I mean it's not the ideal situation obviously but it's such a cool place such a happy place and I worked there for a summer and I dream about being there all the time so if I could do it for a day that's where I'd go and this is why you are a hero and I'm not because <laughs> I'm thinking everybody else I know is going to pick a sandy beach somewhere <laughs> well I would love that too I love beaches jet skiing uh-huh 
on the ocean. That that could be on the but list. But you're picking too. the orphanage in Romania. Mm. Boy, how many how many bonus points does she get really? No, if you had been there, Garth, you would choose it too. It's amazing. It's not even like a I am the greatest human and want to go serve children. I love children, but it seriously is just the happiest place. It's amazing. Happiest place on Disneyland, you've got competition. Oh, there's way too many people at Disneyland. Oh, well, you're telling me. Standing in line, it's, I'm subtracting three entertainment points for every minute I'm in this line. I got you. What traits yeah. define you? Traits. Um... If, uh, if, if you had to describe yourself to somebody. Hmm, happy. Um, Would have never guessed. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty easygoing. I am a hard worker. I have no concept of time. I'm a terrible time manager. Uh huh. So that would definitely be in my description of myself. Um, oh, I try to be really kind. Mm -hmm. Did I say that already? Orphanage in Romania. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, I just really love life. I don't know. Okay. Pretty, pretty simple person. <laughs> All right. And the other side of the coin, what is stressful to you? For example, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about uh, mm -hmm. my issues. For me, what's stressful is that dream where I, let's say I didn't graduate, mm -hmm. and I have to go get a class, mm -hmm. and I don't know what class it is, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to apply for that class, mm -hmm. I don't know where to apply for that class. And I ask somebody, and they don't know. And mm -hmm. it's like, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. And it's that endless thing of, I can't figure out how to do what I yeah. need to do. Mm -hmm. That's that's st what stress is for me. Yeah. Tell me what it is for you. Yeah, I think that would stress me out too. Um, the biggest things for me probably, again, time management. I am not very good at it, so that's stressful. Um <laughs> And decision making, I feel really paralyzed by big decisions, specifically trying to figure out what I wanted to study, trying to figure out what I want to do after graduation, um, what career I want to pursue, who I want to be with. Yeah, those kinds of decisions, decisions really <laughs> stress me out pretty badly. So those are big ones. What's, what's your favorite nightmare? Oh, Favorite? Do you, your, your least favorite nightmare, the one that, oh. that you remember for the whole next day. Yeah, I have nightmares all the time that my parents are in trouble. I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. like that my mom will be really struggling with something or my dad will die and I'll be with my mom mourning. Those kind of dreams happen all the time, specifically with my parents. I don't know why. My parents are awesome and not in any grave danger that I know of. Mm -hmm. But that's... Is that are we talking about like actual dream nightmares? Yeah. When I'm sleeping, yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh -huh. um, we talked about your greatest and worst traits already. So, um, and then you're a student. I am. Mm -hmm. And you graduate in a couple of months. <gasps> Praises. <laughs> <laughs> so a question that I would ask a lot of other people uh -huh. may not be uh, very meaningful to you, but I'm going to ask it anyway. You know, a lot of okay. especially guys. Mm -hmm. Um, are asking themselves, am I more than a paycheck? Mm -hmm. And for example, I, I know of a guy who lives just, you know, I could probably throw a rock from here and hit his house. Mm -hmm. And he really believes that he has no value to his family other than every two weeks he brings home money. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you deal with, with you know, you're not a, a paycheck, you're not a bring home the bacon person yet and you're not bringing it home to anybody but yourself mm -hmm. but uh you have some pretty back, good back, background in psychology mm -hmm. what's your what are your insights there um well first i would just say that money is so important we all know that we need money to survive and it's important to make a living for sure, not discrediting that at all. And definitely for someone who's trying to provide for a family, paycheck is huge, huge. Um, but life without money is way better than life without meaningful relationships. So to me, 
Meaningful relationships always trump the money. If you have enough to survive, there's kind of this level, if you don't have enough food to eat, if you're starving, then meaningful relationships can maybe take a back, take the back burner for a little bit. But if you have enough to survive, relationships always trump. So uh, I worked for a couple years between my degrees, between my undergraduate and my graduate degree. And I was working in business and I loved it and I made pretty good money, especially for someone that was single and didn't have a family to provide for. So I was just bringing home my own bacon to myself. Uh-huh. Um, and it was awesome. I loved it. I love working. I love loved working in business, but there was just something more that I wanted to do there. It felt like there was something missing. And I will graduate with an additional degree and work in a field where I will make less money than I would working where I did before, uh-huh. um, which is kind of discouraging on some level, I guess. But yeah. but if the work is meaningful to me and the relationships that I'm able to build in that work are meaningful to me, then that feels more valuable. No amount of money will fill the hole that relationships will leave. So that's what I would say. But for sure, you need to provide for your family. So I get the stress of it. I, I feel bad for your friend that feels that way. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, you know, and that's part of the reason why we're doing this is there's a lot of guys. I'm going to say the large majority. Yeah. And I've, I've been there. I've actually discovered this in mm-hmm. myself. I graduated with that engineering degree. And, mm-hmm. um, and then I started building rocket motors one day, designing them. Mm-hmm. And it basically is was about writing is and was conditions with a diagram here and a diagram there. Mm-hmm. And it was insanely boring. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, who would have thought that I actually need to have my work be meaningful. Right. I, I thought I was in it for the paycheck. Right. <laughs> right. And we're kind of taught that in our culture, right? That we should be pursuing a career where we can make good money. Yeah. Yeah. And then I realized that if my work got used, millions of Russians would die. And if it didn't get used, then it'd be useless. So, you know, all that kind of messed with my head. And so <laughs> yeah. I went and did something else. That feels heavy. I will say, though, this is kind of a tangent, Garth, but one of the things that is quite emphasized in my um, area of study right now is father involvement Mm -hmm. and the importance of father involvement, which is something that's been studied for a long time. But for your friend that feels like that's his only contribution, man, if he knew the difference that an emotionally involved father can make He's got he's got a big role to play at home besides putting food on the table. So I think you you have the key words there, um, emotionally involved. Mm-hmm. Because I've been there. I've I've felt that way myself. I've got my friend that barely said those words. I've got another friend who I know he feels that way, only mm-hmm. he feels like a double failure because he's not bringing home that bacon. Mm-hmm. So now he's really killing himself. Mm-hmm. Um Guys, we're, we're a mess. <laughs> I think everybody's a mess sometimes. <laughs> so it's not just you. It's definitely not just guys. <laughs> so you have succeeded. You got a very nice degree. Tell me a little bit about your degree so these guys can understand what you're giving up money to okay. do. <laughs> well, I study developmental psychology. So from infancy through adulthood, cognitive development, the way that we think, the things that motivate us, the things we struggle with. Um, It's more, developmental psychology is quite different than clinical psychology in that clinical psychology studies how things go wrong and what to do when things go wrong mentally or emotionally. Developmental psychology is what causes it all. What's the buildup? What things happen in childhood that are leading to mental illness or struggles in adulthood? So I study more the story from beginning to end. So. And I'm waiting for that last part that you told me uh, uh, before. <laughs> sexual. Addiction. Addiction. Yeah. Yeah. So my emphasis in my master's degree and my thesis is, is sexual addiction. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's, that's got to be porn. It's mm-hmm. got to be what else? Mm-hmm. Well, a sexual addiction can be pornography, masturbation, and just engaging in sexual acts that are way beyond what would exist in a typical or healthy relationship. Uh-huh. So. Okay. 
It's heavy. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why it's better you than me. I'd rather hold the microphone and let you do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are your What have you had to overcome? So you you've got this. Uh, you you can change the world with what you have prepared to do. Mm-hmm. Was it an easy path getting there? No, no, I don't think it's an easy path for anyone. But what have you had to overcome to get there? Um. Well, it feels like a lot of years. Um, of education and overcoming. But I think some of the big ones starting out were, um, I just, just kind of logistical obstacles. I grew up in an awesome family, but we really struggled financially. And, um, my parents encouraged us to, to get an education, but didn't have the means to help. So um, going to college was a little bit scary, trying to trying to put myself through school. And so logistically speaking, financially, that was an obstacle for me. Um, and neither of my parents finished college when, when they were young. And so um, me and my siblings were kind of first generation, I guess. But my dad actually got his bachelor's degree while I was in school, so that's cool. So you were his inspiration. Uh, he's mine, but I hope maybe a little that I've been able to inspire him as well. Um, so yeah, that was an obstacle. Um, I was terribly shy growing up, and so the thought of of moving to what to me at the time was a pretty big city. I grew up in a town of about five thousand in Idaho, so um, being shy there was okay because I knew everybody, <laughs> but. Um, getting to the point where I could, where I could talk to people and be brave enough to make friends and, um, talking to professors was terrifying for me. So during my undergrad, that was challenging, but it's gotten a lot better. Um, and then probably the biggest one in the last few years, like a lot of people, I struggle quite a bit with depression. And so getting to the point where I could go back to school and, figure out how to manage that while pursuing a higher education and working and stuff was challenging, but it's, it's going okay. I'm going to graduate. So. <laughs> depression. I have to admit, I don't understand depression. Uh, depression yeah. is two different words. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the, there's, I'm depressed today because my mm-hmm. dog eh, pooped in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And and then there's the much deeper depression mm-hmm. where you don't want to get out of bed in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a friend, for example, who she stood up in actually in church, and she said I had a uh, a, a talk prepared, mm-hmm. but instead I'm going to talk about depression. Mm-hmm. And she says I was you know I'd tell my mom that I'm depressed, and she says well why are you depressed? You've got a great husband, you've got a beautiful family, mm-hmm. and she's like. You don't get it. Mm -hmm. You don't begin to understand. Mm -hmm. Help me understand. Oh, gosh. I I wish that I was better at helping people to understand. Um, But I was very much in your shoes growing up. There's, There's quite a bit of depression in my family and extended family. And so I had seen it a lot. And I always just thought, like, come on, we're okay. You can do it. Like you can smile and everything will be okay. I was very naive to um, the severity of it and um, and didn't struggle with it at all growing up or throughout my high school years until um, I was about 21. And for me, the only way that I could describe it was that my life felt so, my life seemed so good. It definitely wasn't perfect ever, but I have a good family and good friends and I had food to eat, warm place to live. Everything seemed like it was okay. But somehow there was just this dark cloud following me around and in my mind, my life just felt so heavy. And 
one of the biggest struggles with depression is a complete lack of motivation. So the things that used to make you really happy, I didn't want to play sports, I didn't want to be with friends, I didn't want to hang out with my family, and those are my things. Hallmark Christmas movies wouldn't even do it, you know? <laughs> so for some people, that, that would make them depressed, but... <coughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, it honestly doesn't, it doesn't make sense. There's usually not a really good explanation. Sometimes there, I mean, everyone will probably go through a period of depression where they just feel like life is so heavy and they don't want to do anything and it just feels too hard. I think all of us will experience that at some point. And there's a really wide spectrum. I'm definitely not even sort of, um, on the worst end of it, I know there are people whose depression is absolutely debilitating in a way that mine isn't, and I don't completely understand that, but it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's, it is not an easy road. <laughs> so, so you, and, and I imagine with depression, um, come your demons. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it probably makes them all out louder. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, a lot harder yeah, to ward off. You know? Here we come. Right. The right. door is open. Uh-huh. What do your demons tell you? Especially when you're depressed. Do they tell mm-hmm. you different stuff when you're depressed versus when you're not? Um, I don't think they tell me different things. I just think that it's it's a lot harder for me to fight them off. I'm generally a pretty optimistic person, so I mean everybody has demons. There's always the no, Carly, you're not good enough. You can't do this. But usually I'm just like, watch me. Yeah, I can. You know, <laughs> when I'm in a, when I'm struggling quite a bit with depression, when I'm not in a very good place, it's just, you just believe your demons, you know? So mm-hmm. um, somehow mine are always about like future events that somehow all the things that I've been working towards, all the things that I'm trying to accomplish won't matter, that I won't be successful in a career, that I won't be able to have a family. It's always tied to the future, my own or that of people that I love. Isn't that funny? Because mine are all tied to the past. That's interesting. Of course. It's probably because you're getting up there. Yeah, it's probably (laughs) because I have a whole bunch of past and you've got a whole bunch of future. (laughs) You got a lot of future too. You know, there, there's something to be said, though. I mean, if, if your demons fear your future, mm-hmm. they're going to tell you don't even try. Right. That makes perfect sense right. to me. Right. So that's what your demons look like. Well, yeah. I, yeah. And so you get past the demons and the depression and, uh, you know, some of the other stuff you were talking about, shyness, to now you're months away from changing the world. The dream. <laughs> That's the dream. Yeah. And you know what? Unless you listen to your demon, which I know you won't, you will. I hope so. Um, so, you know, the next question is how do you deal with the demons? I think you've mm-hmm. already answered that to some point. It's like, watch me. Mm-hmm. Is that generally your, your response? Uh, it's it's one of them. I don't know where I get this prove you wrong mentality, but I do that with a lot of People, I don't even think it's always really healthy, but but when people tell me that I can't do something, I'm like, okay, now I will. Just because you said I couldn't, now I'm going to do it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's part of it for sure. <laughs> Boy, you know, I know your family, and that, uh-huh. that sounds really familiar. Your, <laughs> your cousin, is, she's, uh, she's 17, uh-huh. and... Um, and my friend, her dad, will, will tell her, you know, go make your bed. And her response is, well, I was gonna, but now I can't because you told me. <laughs> so the flip side, the teenager yeah. version of, yeah. yes, I can, it's, watch me. <laughs> you know, you, if your demons got smarter, they mm-hmm. would tell you, go for your future. You'd be mm-hmm. like, no. <laughs> yeah. How would your best friend describe you? Oh, gosh. Um... <laughs> Let's talk for uh, just a second about... What are the traits of your best friend? What does he or she look like, or uh, not look like? What are they? What are they like? Yeah. Um, well, I have a lot of friends that I absolutely adore, but honestly, my best friend in the world is my mom. Nice. Well, well, yeah. I mean, she's 
you should interview my mom if you want to interview a hero. My mom is absolutely the best person I've ever met. She's phenomenal. So I just want her to be my best friend because I want to be just like her. <laughs> um, so how would I describe her? Um, she's unbelievably kind on a level that just astounds me. She's kind to everyone, no matter who it is or how they treat her. Um, so patient. I've never seen my mom lose her temper, ever, in my whole life. Um, and I have four siblings, so she had plenty of reasons <laughs> to well, lose I'm her temper. Well, I'm thinking uh, no parent can, uh, can traverse the day without wanting to kill their children at least yeah. twice. And I'm sure that she wanted to, but she never did, <laughs> so that's a win. Um, and, and I have lost my temper a lot. I don't know if never losing your temper is an option for most people who are human, <laughs> yeah. but my mom can pull it off. Um, she's brilliant with business and money and has just learned on her own. She didn't go to school for it. I think she did one semester at BYU and that uh -huh. was it. Um, but she's just brilliant. She's absolutely brilliant. I okay. adore her. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. You, uh, you thought that the uh, demon questions were hard. Mm -hmm. How would your mom describe you? Oh, gosh. Well, that's not really fair. That makes me sound so cocky because your mom always thinks you're the best. <laughs> Even when she knows you're the worst. Yeah, I, get I should that. have done one of my other friends who would actually talk about my weaknesses more. I'll, I'll put you only on, on, on the spot only for maybe two yeah. words. What two words would she describe? Um, she calls me the helper, so okay. probably that, and, and kind, I guess. My mom, I think she just sees it because it's in her so much, mm -hmm. but she's, she's kind of developed inside of all of her children a desire to take care of people, so. Kind is an, is an important word for me, um. Uh, I have, um, you know, this is my second marriage. I was looking for kind. Mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people, male and female, who have mm -hmm. been divorced. They're all looking for kind. Yeah. Funny how we're all looking for it, and not very many of us are very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But luckily, it's something we can practice. There are so many things that I aspire to be, but kind is my number one. So, it's a pretty I big deal to me. I need to hear the rest of that paragraph. What else do you aspire to be? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. That's a long, longer paragraph than you maybe want to get into. But I just have a lot of dreams. I I just dream really big. So, I want to be an entrepreneur and start a business. I want to be a mom and adopt, especially just because <laughs> of my experience with that. Um I want to be someone who changes the world, not for a lot of people, but maybe for a couple. Oh, for $10 <laughs> an hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, the goal is to teach, to be a professor, so it's not great pay, but it's better than $10 an hour. An hour. <laughs> That's why I got to be an entrepreneur and have a little side hustle. That's right. So, so that the professoring is pure uh -huh. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. How do you receive your guidance? Um, a lot of it is, is tied to spirituality. I, one of the things that I aspire to do, to be is a really, really good Christian. Mm -hmm. So I pray a lot and ask God to help me in every area of my life. And I'm not always really good at listening to what he says or what he's telling me, but I try to be. Let's say that, uh, that I got run over by a bus five minutes from now, and now mm -hmm. I become one of your, let's call it a guardian angel. <laughs> How am I going to get through to you? Am I going to just whisper in your ear? Am I mm -hmm. going to come to you in a dream? How has it happened in the past? A lot of it, well, too, actually. How are you at singing? <laughs> um, other people. So a lot of my guidance, I feel like, comes from other people. I don't know if God just knows that he that I'm not a good enough listener for him to talk to me directly. But, um, yeah, I think that other people giving advice or counsel or guidance, that's one way that I think 
God speaks to me. Do you um, get guidance through singing? Yeah, well, through singing and music. I uh -huh. don't know what it is about music, but I think music is the way that I feel closest to God, both singing and listening to music. I write music quite a bit, so. So I would have to learn how to sing and then be like, don't go over to that house. <laughs> exactly okay. like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if you're going to be my guardian angel, I need you to take to some sing. heavenly singing lessons. <laughs> um. Here's another toughie that we'll okay. finish up with. Okay. Who are you really? Hmm. That's a deep question, Garth. <laughs> Who am I really? It's easy for I me think... to ask and then shut up and then just have all the, yeah. uh, the, the weight <laughs> of the moment on you. Right. I think the more <laughs> I learn about people, which has been everything that I study for the last however many years, the more I learn about people, the more I realize that I, the person that I am at my core is very similar to who everyone else is at their core. Um, so I'd say I am someone who wants to love and be loved, but someone who's really broken and really messed up in a lot of ways, but who who wants to be happy. And I think that a lot of our happiness comes from experiencing love in different ways. So that's what I would say at my core, someone broken who wants to love and be loved. And I think that's probably true for just about everybody. I hope you found that as inspiring as I did. Here's a woman with her own specially tailored demons and inadequacies, the shyness, the depression, um, the, just the, the difficulties that were meant specifically for her as she slogs through those. Here's a woman who knows who she is, what her mission and purpose is, at least in part. Here's a woman who is willing to take less money after getting a master's degree than she was getting with just a bachelor's degree. And she does so willingly and happily because she knows that that's who she is. Here's a woman who, despite her own set of personally tailored demons, she's going to stop some guy or number of people from becoming demons of their own, rapists, or worse. Here's a woman who will change the world for somebody and prevent somebody's family from being destroyed in the way that flesh demons, human demons, can do. Here's a woman that is a, an inspiration and a hero to me. You know, I'm not here to record this to tell you that she is awesome. She is. I'm not, I am here to tell you that she's awesome because she knows who she is. And that each of us, as we explore who we are, what our own gifts are, and as we become who we were intended to be, we can be heroes too, like Carly. <laughs>